we also want to learn about you. We know you have a degree in chemical engineering. How did you go from a degree in chemical engineering to writing these thrillers? I get asked that a lot. Um, actually, I started writing as a hobby, and it was uh, I started. I started writing after I started reading again. I read as a little kid. I loved, I read all the time. And I was, I was the kid with the Nancy Drew book under the covers with the flashlight. Um, and uh, I read all the time. But then when I got to high school and college, you don't have time, you know? I was reading textbooks and this. And then I got started working and it was manuals. And, and I actually got a degree in engineering because I liked chemistry, I liked math. And then the department gave me a scholarship. And it was, I was a poor kid and it was free money. You know, it's like no poor kid turns down a full scholarship. Right. So that's why I got the engineering degree. And then I'm like, well, what do I do with this? So I started working, and the job I got required me to fly. I don't like to fly. I've been flying for almost 30 years now. Yeah. I still don't like to fly. But I really was terrified then. And so I started reading again. Um, basically to forget that I was at 30,000 feet and yeah. probably going to, there was just like me and the pilot away from death, you know, certain death. And uh, um, as I started to read, it's almost like it perked the creative juices in my mind started to go. And I started to see the scene that I knew I had never seen in a, ever, anywhere else. And yeah. it was bothering me and it was keeping me awake and it was distracting me at work. So I figured if I finally wrote it down, it would go away. It would just stop and leave me alone, Did and it? no, <laughs> and I got the bug, and then that. But it, it was never uh, the writing became um, kind of my guilty pleasure. Mm -hmm. It was the thing I did when I had time. The children were in bed, um, or I was traveling in a hotel room or in an airport, and I was away from my family. Um, I traveled a lot internationally. Mm -hmm. I couldn't take enough books with me, and there were no e-readers. This was the '90s, you know. Yeah. There were no, there were e-readers, but the only thing you could get were like um, the free books that were a hundred years old, you know. Yeah. The you, classics. Exactly. <laughs> like, okay, well, you know, I read all those in high school. <laughs> They're not going to take my mind off the fact that I'm at thirty thousand feet and one pilot away from certain death. So um, I, I would bring all these books with me, and when they were read, I would write my own because there was no TV. I didn't really know anybody other than the work people, and it was a different language, you know? So I couldn't sit down and watch the tube. Yeah. So um, actually, I told the story the last time I was in South Africa, and a lady in the audience said, I just would have gone to the bar. Yeah, like, that's what I would have done. It never occurred to me. I just <laughs> I was like, that never occurred to me. <laughs> So I'm glad I was. Uh, I'm, I'm glad I was shy. Yeah. I'm shy, and there were no e-readers. So I wrote as a hobby, and it was finally my husband. Five years later, my, I did this for five years, and nobody knew about my husband, mm -hmm. and maybe one other friend that I had, you know, pledged to secrecy because I thought, I think I thought people would laugh at me, you know, if they knew that this was something that I did, and uh, my husband pushed me to submit the work, and I did. And first time I did, it was you know, nice rejections, but enough to let me know, you know, there was enough good stuff in there mm -hmm. to let me know that there was something. And so I kept going and um, decided it was something that I wanted to do. But if, even then, it wasn't a career. I just wanted to see my book in print, yeah. you know? I think that's every writer's dream. Well, then I lost my job. It was after 9-11, the company I was working for, by that point, um, laid off a, num a bunch of their workforce. Mm -hmm. and I lost my job. And so the writing became a lot more than just I want to see my book on the shelf. You know, it became a, a source of income. Yes. And that's when, you know, I was pretty much forced to write full time. I think had I, that not happened, I probably would have continued that weekend dabbling. Well, they say thing. everything happens for a reason. Yeah, so it, that's, how, that's how the engineer became a writer. And lastly, um, can you give us a message for all of your South African fans? Um, yes. First, I, first of all, I want to say that you have a lovely country and I've always felt very welcome here. But I want to thank you so very much for reading my books, all of your emails. Some of my most touching emails have come from South Africa. So I just want to thank you very much for reading my books and I hope you enjoy Watch Your Back. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much for coming in. That was great.